everywhere from about our 10 o'clock to our 2 o'clock, 240 yards out, pretty much a semicircle out there. There's about 40 caribou. Sean's going to take a, a gamble, and we're going to go up this hill to the right, and hopefully the caribou, when they get to the ridge, turn right. If they do, money in the bank. If they go left, it was a fun stock. There are people in this world that go looking for adventure, and then there are those that live it every day. That's a big one too. Wow. Whoa. Right Came on. Clear out of the water. Wasn't that awesome? Oh. Nice. He's down. Well, I've never caught a fish off the bottom that had live bait in its mouth. <laughs> that is going to be a very short, dangerous trip, but we're going for big rams, you know? We'll do what it takes to get them. That's a 400 pound fish. There's no way we can catch that very close. Ow! It was 420 pounds. It was just under eight feet long. Alaska Outdoors Television. Experience Alaska like never before. ADAC's a great place to go hunt caribou. Logistically, it's easy to get there. It's easy to hunt. It's, it's really a neat place to go. It's 1,200 miles west of Anchorage, southwest of Anchorage, almost as far as flying to Seattle. So if you want to buy a ticket, it's expensive. But if you have airline miles, you can go out there on 15,000 airline miles. <laughs> Neat history, you know, Adak Island. Uh, it was a naval base uh, back in World War II is when it was created. The government brought in thousands of troops. They came in, they built a runway, uh, established a a plan of attack, and they attacked uh, the Japanese out on uh, Kiska uh, within a week. It's amazing what those guys did out there. And it, at its uh, heyday, just before it started uh, shutting down, there were thousands of people out there. They had all the amenities. They even had a McDonald's out there on ADAC with a drive-through. I think it shut down, they started to downsize in, in 94, and I believe they, they uh, completely shut down in 1997 out there. Now there's just a couple hundred people. The Alley Corporation um, owns a large portion of the land out on ADAC, and the federal government owns the other portion. The Eagles reminded me of uh, hunting on Kodiak Island. You know, the, uh, the story is that you shoot a deer and it's like a dinner bell for the bears. Well, you shoot a caribou out on Adak Island, it's like a dinner bell for the eagle. It blows out there so badly. Holy cow! This is nice. <laughs> it, it'll blow 50, 60, 70 miles an hour while you're out there on your trip. Is this how it is all the time? This is how it always is. It might even blow harder tomorrow. I don't know for sure, but it looks like an old um, mine that you put out in the water. And then what they've done is they've, they've, uh, they've welded on a little bit of a stack and a front uh, compartment for you know loading it full of wood to <laughs> the good stove. And then once you get out there, you really have um, three choices. You can stay in the Alley Corporation buildings. They're real nice. They're warm. You have TV, phone, full kitchen, or you can. Uh, decide to stay in one of the bunkers. If the guy didn't want to stay in the zero lot line, you could certainly come in and put your tent in here or put your sleeping bag and sleeping pad in here. Right. And, and, and these are all over the island, aren't they? Oh, they're everywhere. Right. And then, you know, if you want, you can also bring your tent and decide to fight the elements. But I tell you, the weather can be pretty nasty out there, and you really don't want to be in a tent. We ran into a couple guys out there at the airport, and they were telling us about, about their tent experience first or second night out there, their tent completely collapsed on them because the wind was blowing so hard. Adak's a great place to go hunt caribou. I went last year with my boy, he shot some caribou. So this year I decided to take two of my really good friends. For each of these guys, it was a special trip for two different reasons. 
Uh, Rod Van Son had never shot a, shot a caribou, so my goal was to get him his first, first caribou, preferably a big bull. And then Sean, he wanted to stick a caribou with a bow. They're down in the shade. They're down they're in the shade right here. The... You know, you're not going to see very many hunters out there. I think the plane had 15 to 20 hunters, counting us. And then coming back, we ran into about the same amount of hunters. Uh, during our hunt, I think we we saw some people on a uh, in Argo one day. But other than that, it's a big area. You don't really run into people out there. feeding up higher on the side now. See them over there? Oh, oh yeah. They're above the Oh, I see them now. They're, like they're staring right at us. <laughs> we got two caribou moving up through the valley up here. They're feeding right up into the wind. It might be tough to get up to them. Doc and I have been stalking this group of caribou. And we came over the little ridge earlier, and uh, we spooked one of them, and it ran. And we thought we were just totally busted. But then, as we made our way up this ridge, we just peeked our head over, and there's still two or three caribou just right over the ridge, about 100 yards away. So the wind is at the caribou's back. So we're doing good on the wind, and we're just hoping the caribou come up through this funnel. There's seven of them now. These caribou are moving up this ranch here, and when they get to the top, they're either gonna go left into that big valley, or they're gonna go right and follow the ridge line. Sean's going to take a, a gamble, and we're gonna go up this hill to the right, and hopefully the caribou, when they get to the ridge, turn right. If they do, money in the bank. If they go left, it was a fun stock. Sean uh, went up that ridge just like we were talking about, and sure enough, those animals, they came up the, up the draw and they turned right at the ridge just like we thought they were going to. Sean was in position, we're standing there. I did the range finder, 27 yards. Animal stands broadside to Sean, pulls back. The thing turns on him, <laughs> walks, stops again. Boom, he lets loose, and the wind was just blowing through that funnel like you wouldn't believe, and his arrow just went <laughs> It just didn't look like anything like a, like an arrow should. And of course, it missed. And so those uh, caribou came, spooked right back down into the gully here. And uh, we watched them for a little while. And now, as we look over into the next bowl, there's about 50 caribou scattered out. There's a group of 10, group of 20, group of 10. There's about 50 caribou down there. They're a little far away, so we can't tell if there's any big bulls. But there's definitely a lot of caribou to get. Now we're gonna we're gonna head back down and grab the ATVs and come back up through this valley. There are a number of ATV trails out there. Not a lot, but uh, but there are a number of them that you can take up through. Husky Pass, or over to Bonnie Lake, out and around uh, Shagak Bay. There's uh, a number of trails that you can actually take, and they're and they're marked on the Aleut Corporation map. Ooh, nothing like bald tires, baby. Oh, that's not gonna be good. We rented ATVs out there. The four wheelers that we rented, you know, the tires were a little bald but uh, they worked out just fine. Uh, we went up some muddy trails, some really muddy trails, and uh, we tested the strength and the endurance of those, uh, those four-wheelers. If you, if you go out to ADAC, you really want to make sure you have good boots, good rain gear, 
and good warm weather gear because it, it's typically pretty cold out there when you count the wind chill factor. You know, it's interesting how these caribou got out to Adak. Years ago, they brought these caribou out from another herd, uh, just a small amount of caribou, but there's no predators on Adak, so the caribou really flourish. There's great vegetation, and there's not that much hunting pressure out there, and so the caribou herd just grew and grew and grew. The antlers on these caribou are, are very large. The bodies on these caribou are very large. In fact, I believe the world record caribou came from Adak. So it's, it's really a neat place to go hunt trophy caribou. There's caribou everywhere from about our 10 o'clock to our 2 o'clock, 240 yards out, pretty much a semicircle out there. There's about 40 caribou, but they're, they're scattered out. There's like two or three here, four or five there. If you go on your belly right to there and just carefully peek over, it's only 130 yards, so. You didn't see any bulls over here, we'll take a look. Is. We had three bulls just now, 125 yards, nice place to rest, to shoot. Uh, very easily could have taken those three bulls if we wanted to. There were a couple of other bulls at 130 yards uh, a few minutes earlier that we could have taken. But we see some bigger bulls out in the distance. They're a ways away. Uh, we're certainly turning down these bulls to uh, try to get some bigger bulls. But hey, uh, we're early in the hunt. Go get some big ones. While Rod and I are doing our stock, uh, Doc was back behind us because there were lots of caribou right around us and he was trying to get a, get a caribou with a bow. So we left him and he went down and, and went on a stock on this caribou. So we go out on our, on our uh, first day of hunt, we're overlooking just a whole bunch of caribou, just lots and lots of caribou out in this little bowl. And so we're trying to figure out which caribou we're going to go after and how we're going to get to them and Rod Van Son spots this caribou about a mile away. I think he spotted the farthest caribou away, and that's the one he wanted. He's big, Rob. Okay, good. Go ahead. But the question is, how do we get from here through all these caribou and up to those to get to that bull? As luck would have it, you know, we had caribou in front of us, and then the caribou he wanted was behind him. So how are we going to get through these caribou without spooking the one that we wanted to shoot. What we'll need to do is we'll get on the four-wheelers and come around this way, because uh -huh. that's the only way to ride. Right. And you cut across the end of the lake, and then the, the four-wheeler trail goes up to the top of that mountain. The hill over there, it goes right up on top. And so we'll be up there, and then we can stop up there and look. And then we can make a decision from there. Sure, okay. Here we just go on foot. We can get up there and take a take a good look at them. Nice shot, Big one in the back, three twenty. Look at that thing, huh? That is a nice ADAC bull caribou. Boy. Look at that, for your first? For my first for caribou. For your first caribou. Yeah, that's just the beauty. Wow, look at that. Look at that. Yeah. Excellent, man. Hey, hey. Sweet. Cool, huh? Look at that. Nice job, man. Hey. Hey. Nice. Rob look called at that it how to stock rack it too. on that thing. Oh yeah, just look at the beauty. length on that. It's weird. Yeah, the bezes aren't real flat, but they're the really best part long. is we got some they excellent are. eating right here, boys, and we're going to chow down some backstraps tonight. 
Wow, look at that. Wow. We had this really cool thing happen to us. You know, these caribou, they're so curious. Uh, Rod Van Son had shot this bull, and Sean and I look up, and there's this cow. It's poking his head over the hill and looking at us, taking a couple steps and looking at us. It starts grunting at us. It's, it's making all these funny noises, you know? So Sean and I, we start grunting back at her, and we do the, the white handkerchief thing, and what a neat experience. Since I saw lots and lots of ptarmigan last year, when I was out there, I decided to bring my 20 gauge and shoot some ptarmigan while I was uh, out there on ADAC. All right. <laughs> There's about 30 of them sitting there right now, 25 maybe. Really? Yeah. All right. Roddy. All right. We got the shotgun shells ready. All right, let's take those. Yeah. And get, uh, get three ready for when I hand you the gun. Oh yeah, okay. Man, there was ptarmigan everywhere. We had a great time shooting ptarmigan. I went out there with eight shells and was able to get six or seven ptarmigan just on that last day. We got this well, hill. Let's go with this and one first, this then this one, and then there's the third hill right there. Excellent. Sorry. All right. <laughs> They're feeding. I just got to get down low enough that I can scoot over there. Shot right here, right here. Oh, <laughs> right on. Excellent. <laughs> you got two of them. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go get those two. Boy, beautiful birds. Yes, they are. Nice. Look at that. That's a big one. Yeah. Caribou! Go get some caribou. Yeah, that last one's a decent one. We'd shoot that. I wouldn't mind hiking up to where this eagle is. So eagle sitting up there. The just, to get a little, just to get a little look over there. Works for me. See what we see? Okay. Let's head that way. The last one that just came out of the river is the biggest one. They're coming. Maybe I'll go right over here. Of this. He had a, a decent sized antler on one side. The other antler was broke off about halfway up. And I could have taken him right yeah, there on the side of that hill, 200 yards, broadside 208 yards. But we have a heck of a long pack out. If I'm going to shoot an animal this far out, I want it to be a big one. Get going. After our trek all through the mud and stuff with the four wheelers, we got down here and we got this nice valley that's got probably again another 50 to 70 caribou in the bottom of it. There's a decent bull toward the back of it. And with any luck, we'll be able to close the distance a little bit and get in on them. I think we're just going to drop down over the top of this ridge, get up on the little vantage point. I think it's probably going to be about 250 to 300 yards from there, and we'll see what we need to do. Caribou are always on the move. It doesn't look like it. It looks like they're just, you know, sort of grazing, but they're moving pretty quickly, and, and they're always moving. It's 375 yards. 
I watched these caribou a lot last year, and I really saw, um, you know, where they were going to go, and where they're going to come from. And so when we did our stock, uh, we took that into consideration, and we came around these rocks and looked at the caribou, and went back around the rocks and and hiked a little bit farther down the uh, down the ledge there. It was really a neat stock. And finally, we came up on these caribou, and they're just right down below us. Down she goes, baby. This is a real affordable hunt if you want to make it an affordable hunt. You, you really have the option to go out there and hunt caribou for almost nothing. Or you can go out to ADAC and it can be very expensive. Uh, on one hand, you can take airline miles out there. You can stay in one of the bunkers and it's not really going to cost you anything. Uh, you can you can hunt the caribou on foot. You don't need to rent a four-wheeler and still have some success out there. You're just going to work for it. Alaska Outdoors Television, produced by 59th Parallel Productions.